Property Practitioners Regulatory Authority wants to implement BE for all property practitioners. But Sakaliha may have just bought us some time. Before I get into this, ladies and gentlemen, please leave a like on this video, share it far and wide, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, let's get into it. Listen properly. When you get into a taxi, you sit down before you get in. <laughs> Did I hear that great? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Newsflash. I'm your host, Joe Emilio. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so for those of you who may not know, on 13th of March, 2024, the Property Practitioners Regulatory Authority, or PPRA, announced that BE is now a precondition for doing business. Property practitioners with less than 40 points on a BE scorecard will be refused their Fidelity Fund certificate, making it illegal for them to continue operations. Here is Pete LaRue, the CEO of Sakaliha, who put out a video explaining a little bit more. The PPRA has decided that BEE certificates must have at least 40 points to be valid. According to the PPRA's Acting Transformation Fund Manager in its 13 March industry webinar, if you score anything below 40, and if your BEE certificate is non-compliant, then we will not be able to issue you with a Fidelity Fund certificate. The PPRA's announcement means that tens of thousands of property businesses are at risk of being prohibited from operating. Annually, more than 40,000 Fidelity Fund certificates are issued to not only estate agents, but also property developers, property administrators, landlords, direct property sellers, auctioneers, property advertisers, and more. But what exactly is the Fidelity Fund certificate? Fidelity Fund certificates are documents issued by the property practitioner's Fidelity Fund. The fund's purpose is simply to ensure that payments held in trust by property practitioners remain safe and that clients can be compensated in case of theft. The fund has nothing whatsoever to do with BEE, yet it is now being abused for the illegitimate purpose of holding property practitioners ransom to political demands. The PPRA is committing a vast and unlawful overreach. It is making the political instrument of BEE a precondition for participation in the economy. It is trying to force property practitioners to relinquish significant portions of their businesses under untenable terms. As such, it is a form of expropriation and one that sets a harmful and unacceptable precedent for state intervention in the economy. So just to be clear, who exactly is affected? Estate agents, developers, management agents, landlords, auctioneers, bond originators, and other property practitioners as defined in the Property Practitioners Act. All their clients and customers across the economy from all communities and racial groups. Most at risk are small, medium, and family-owned businesses. Currently, around 40,000 Fidelity Fund certificates are issued, mostly to estate agents, but the PPRA plans to require such certificates of all property practitioner categories as soon as possible. That's not right. Well, that is pretty scary stuff, but there is an update to all of this. In a letter titled The PPRA's Tactical Retreat on Triple B Double E and What to Do Next, Pete LaRue wrote, the letter relayed that the PPRA had sought legal advice and would no longer be required Level 8 Triple B Double E certificate with new FFC applications. At last, its counsel had confirmed what our legal team had spelt out in letters of demand to the PPRA that the Act's reference in Section 50 AX to a valid BE certificate cannot be construed to mean a certificate of BE compliance not all level 8 nor at any other level. Notably, as the PPRA board chairman makes clear, the PPRA backed down on legal grounds alone. Not only does his letter lack an apology, but it shows, more importantly, no acknowledgement whatsoever of the disruption, ethical complications, and already incurred costs that come with being threatened with restriction of economic participation based on race. It's also worth noting that the PPRA did not even make any public announcement about this stuff. Like they have been so quiet about all of this. Now, the fight is not over, ladies and gentlemen. Sakhalika still has two issues that it wants to fight in court. 
First, there is the Act's requirement that not only estate agents but all property practitioners must have a Fidelity Fund certificate. This improperly expands the reach of the PPRA over thousands of businesses and trillions of rands turnover. This should be reversed. Second, the Act still stipulates that Fidelity Fund certificates may only be issued to applicants with a valid triple B double E certificate. At least for now, the PPRA is reverting back to accepting that valid cannot be taken to mean compliance with triple B double E. Yet the certification demand is itself an unjustified, costly, and harmful infringement on the freedom to do business and serve society. The certificate requirement serves no legitimate government purpose since there is no relationship between fulfilling the inherent requirements of a Fidelity Fund certificate and having a triple B double E certificate or not. The requirement itself should be scrapped. Adding insult to injury, the certificate requirement extends even to those thousands of businesses that do not participate in BEE. Bizarrely, requiring them to fork out in the region of 10,000 rand every year just to buy and submit a valid yet non-compliant triple B double E certificate. And there is your money-making cash cow yet again. See, this is how this is how BEE only serves the elites because only the elites get richer. This doesn't serve your everyday black South African like they claim that it does. And this has been proven time and time again in South Africa. BEE is flawed and it is a corrupt mafia-like syndicate network that is just infiltrating or at least trying to infiltrate across South Africa. It needs to be stopped and it would seem that the battle may have been won by Sakhalicha but the war is not over. But they'll never take our freedom! B is a very racist policy. It's always astonishing to me that South Africans don't, or some South Africans rather, don't find the irony in these BE regulations and policies. Um, I think they should just be scrapped. Any and all BE policies should just be scrapped and let the free market take over and allow for economic growth. But hey, that's just me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. While you're there, leave a like and share this video far and wide and subscribe to the channel. I've got more content coming your way. And with all that being said, thanks for watching. Your newsflash is in. Good news and bad news, right? Come here. Number one, bug was captured. Awesome. That's the good news, right? It's, 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 it's step two. That's the part that might get a little interesting because that specific bug, right? And this is a fun fact. That specific bug relies on its senses. And the most important sense that it relies on, come here, is photographic memory. I'm actually serious. Those specific bugs have photographic memory and they do, in fact, hold grudges. So that then leads to the question, what do you do when you catch the bug in the cup? Um, nothing, actually. You stay there probably forever. I'm not going to lie to you. The, the most important thing that you can do, right, is tell your family, hey, the bug is captured because that's the only thing you can probably say because the minute that you let that cup go, I'm sorry. You know what I mean?